welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In the previous episode, we started discussing the life of Stanisław Wojciechowski, Poland's second president who took office in 1922. In this episode, we will take a look at his time in Russia during the First World War and why he decided to run for president twice in 1922. By the time of uh, the outbreak of the First World War, uh, he differed quite significantly in his opinions from uh, Piłsudski, uh, his erstwhile uh, colleague. Uh, Piłsudski saw uh, the main threat coming from Russia. Uh, Stanisław Wojciechowski believed that it was Germany that was uh, the major uh, threat to Poland and its uh, future. Uh, so he decided to, um, once the Russian authorities evacuated from Congress Poland, the, the Russian uh, occupied part of Poland or the Russian partition, uh, Wojciechowski decided to follow with them and he settled down in Moscow where he spent um, the years of the war. By the time of uh, the February Revolution in 1917, uh, Wojciechowski uh, got very involved in uh, the political organization of ethnic Poles in the Russian Empire. Uh, Poles were being scrambled from across the Russian Empire. Um, many of them had naturally served as conscripts in, in, in the Tsarist armies. And now, as uh, they felt that Poland was about to be reborn, they started forming these uh, ethnic units across Poland and trying to get back to Poland. Um, so Wojciechowski was instrumental in organizing that process. Uh, but by the time of the October Revolution, once it broke out, uh, he realized that he would be a target for the new uh, Bolshevik authorities, and he quickly uh, left for, for Poland. Uh, back in Poland, uh, which was reborn uh, on the same date as, uh, as uh, the armistice came into power in, uh, on, on the Western Front, uh, November 11th, um, just uh, a few months later, or uh, even less than uh, a month and a half later, in, in January, he was uh, sworn in as uh, Minister of Internal Affairs. Uh, so he was involved in Polish politics from uh, the birth of, of the, or the rebirth of, uh, of the Polish state. Uh, he was involved in 1919 in uh, drafting the first constitution, the so-called small constitution, which was later uh, replaced in 1921 by uh, a larger uh, legal document. Um, but that was already a first instance that uh, made him historical, so to say. Um, then uh, he really didn't think that he would continue uh, with politics. Uh, he started representing uh, a party, an agrarian party, uh, named the PSL, or the Polish People's Party. Um, which still exists today. Which still exists today, uh, has, has a long history in Poland, has a very complicated history in Poland. Um, if, if we go into the specifics of the party, <laughs> because now <laughs> you, you lured me into it, <laughs> um, at, at the time of its forming, it, it represented the large agrarian class uh, in Poland, which was a very agrarian society at the end of the 19th century. Uh, but the, um, there had been a, a national rebirth in, in the minds of the peasants, which was uh, quite a recent phenomenon at that time. Uh, it was really starting to uh, accelerate at the time of the outbreak of the First World War. Uh, after, uh, after the war, uh, the movement broke up and was represented by two parties, uh, PSL Wyzwolenie and PSL Piast. And it would be Piast that um, uh, Mr. Wojciechowski would, would represent and become a presidential candidate for. Uh, later on, uh, during the Second World War, um, the party, for example, uh, created the um, prime minister in exile, the last one, Stanisław uh, Mikolajczyk, who tried to return to Poland and um, form, a new, uh, f form a unity government together with the communists in the hopes that uh, Poland wouldn't fall to complete communist power. Uh, naturally, the, the Stalinists, they controlled the uh, so-called uh, uh, what in Russia is called the Shiloviki services, so meaning the, the police, the secret service, the army, and, and they could uh, push these uh, democratic PSL representatives out of Poland. I, naturally, by uh, deporting many of them to Russia, jailing others, executing a few of them, and, and many left for, for the West, including the, the former prime minister. Uh, 
And thanks to that, the communists managed to take over PSL and make it into one of the uh, other two parties, together with another party, um, SD, and technically also by uh, uniting with um, the former Socialist Party, the PPS. Uh, so, so these uh, three or four parties, they all merged into, uh, well, technically it, it wasn't one, one party. The PZ, PZPR was, was one party, and then they had the PSL and SD as this, these... Um, uh, marionettes that were supposed to give some some kind of uh, impression of it, that there is some kind of political independence in Poland, but naturally there, there was none of it. Yes. So during the decades of communism, uh, PSL was uh, a loyal uh, component and part of, uh, of of the communist regime. However, it must be remembered that they had been subjugated by violence back in 1946-47, uh, and now uh, they have been reborn after, uh, uh, in, in the Third Polish Republic after 1989. And there are, uh, there are some jokes about them, because they are always in coalition, they are always in power, and, and they say that their uh, capability for a coalition is always 100%. <laughs> uh, another joke is that uh, after uh, a massive nuclear exchange in the world, uh, two things will survive, uh, cockroaches and PSL. <laughs> but uh, those are quite dirty jokes, but uh, back, back to the story. Of course, yes. Um, so we, we left off at uh, the time of the, uh, the start of the uh, presidential election in 1922. Uh, Poland had been ruled by, um, the, well, there was a, a parliament, but uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of the power was really in the hands of the so-called uh, Naczelnik Państwa, or Chief of State, which was naturally uh, Joseph Piłsudski, who had uh, been given a lot of power during the Polish-Bolshevik War in 1920. Um, and, and he didn't want to continue with this. So uh, the first presidential election to replace him with a president uh, was scheduled to take place in 1922. Piłsudski himself didn't want to run. Adam, I'm just going to have to interrupt you there. As usual, the studio clock is blinking in the corner, saying that we must bring this episode mm -hmm. to a halt, but we will, with your permission, take up the story next time. There we are. I've had to stop Adam almost in mid-sentence. But we will be back on Poland Daily History in the next episode to pick up where we left off. Thank you for watching, and do join us next time on Poland Daily History.